George Santos. Why are we looking at this incompetent person? Why? <laughs> like he's, every minute you look at him is a waste of a minute you have in your life. Welcome to the Bulwark Podcast. I am Charlie Sykes. By the way, by the time you listen to this, you'll probably be a lot smarter than we are because you'll know what the House GOP did, uh, whether or not Jim Jordan is, in fact, the Speaker of the House of Representatives. And Kara, our guest today yeah. is Kara Swisher. Kara, I have to tell you something. Can I make a confession? Sure, the, go ahead. The stupidity really does burn. I mean, it does really it does. Are you the, surprised? Yeah, well, no. No, I shouldn't be, uh -huh. right? Because, I mean, we've been yeah. coming to this for so long. It just It's just the, the fact that we have to talk about the possibility as absurd, as ludicrous as Jim Jordan becoming speaker, huh. probably yeah. one of the least effective members in a pretty mediocre body, you know, a yep. coup co-conspirator, complete idiot. See, but I, what fascinates me is this logic that yeah. Jim Jordan is, is, a, is a legislative terrorist. Now, that's John Boehner's. He's, he's yes. a legislative terrorist and he's an extremist. Yeah. And so the argument is, OK, so we need a terrorist in there to keep the other terrorists in line. We have an extremism well, problem. So let, let's elect an extremist. Yeah. Right. Well, apparently he's nice now. I, I don't <laughs> know. That's what I'm hearing. You know, there's really good line. Lou. Sorry, I sound so bad. I have a cold. Yeah. I have toddlers. Yeah. Um, but there's a really good line. There's a woman named Louise Gluck who just died this yeah. week. Very famous poet. She has a poem called Circe's Power. And the line I love from this poem is. I never turned anyone into a pig. Some people are pigs. I make them look like pigs. That's mm -hmm. what I think about when I think about a lot of these people. That's what they are. You know, not mm -hmm. pigs per se, but this is what they are. And they try to pretend they're not. And they either use social media or a new, this is what we are now. And they try to manipulate people or and, and, and use people's good, good um, intentions of maybe this time. And there is no maybe this time. They are who they are whole time i was not expecting poetry this morning in a discussion about no jim jordan by the way i, I, sh I should introduce yeah. our guest today who really does need no introduction kara swisher uh host of the podcast on with kara swisher co-host yeah. of the podcast pivot and has a forthcoming book burn book a tech yeah. love story will be out yeah. in march well we'll have to have february you back. now february, february right now they moved it up they moved it up yeah so yeah. I, I, again, the, the fact that that Jim Jordan spent the weekend bullying the moderates, yeah. and you know, and I suppose it's cynical. I in my newsletter I quoted somebody as saying, you know, moderates always cave. You know, it's a story as old as time. You know. The the, the normies you know. are just like, you know, and 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 apparently they are still afraid of a mean tweet. They are still terrified of Sean Hannity burning them. Right. Well, this is the point. This is the point. If people have, are shameless and they're willing to do it, people will do it. And they have this tool now, which is social media, to do it. I think most people don't pay attention to this stuff, but it has an outsized power uh, in Washington that they think it does um, and that they will be primaried or mm -hmm. that they'll be made fun of on Fox News. And it's certainly effective in getting people to cave. I just think more people stood up, like, say, John McCain did many years ago, if you remember, when he did his thumbs up thing. Yeah. Um, that, that more people would realize they have power in their hands and the people with without power are the ones who, you know, use bullying as governing, which is not governing. So later it will be a problem because he bullied them into it. Right. Yeah. But today it works and it doesn't really work ever. ever. No, it's not going to work. I mean, the, the, the house is still going to be dysfunctional. It's still going to be a complete clown car because it, whoever yeah. is the speaker still has that narrow majority. And. You have the you no know, craze slavering uh, jackal caucus that still has power. But you right. make an interesting point. You know, one of the things that I think would have surprised the founders is the willingness of so many people in power to step back and give up their power. They thought people would be jealous of their power. The, the number of senators or centrist congressmen, committee chairmen who've decided, you know what, I could be relevant. I could have clout, but I'm going to turn myself yeah. into a potted plant. It's pretty amazing. I'm not surprised. I think they did anticipate it. They did anticipate this idea that people would give up power, and they were scared of it, actually. Mm -hmm. They were scared of that man who had no shame, right? They anticipated it many times in much of their writing. And I think that's why they designed it the way they did, which was because they understood that someone who felt like a king right. would show up at some point. Yeah, now, it right. took this law to, yeah. for it to happen, um, and that they would have no uh, governors, I guess, no governors. And What's interesting is that um, 
it does work. And it, and it ultimately, if you have no shame, you can do very well in politics these days. And I don't think you actually are effective. Yeah. No, and not necessarily so, effective. I mean, but it depends how you define effectiveness. So, you know, Jim Jordan, if he if he becomes the speaker, will be able to push through what defunding the prosecution of, of but he won't. Of Donald but he Trump. won't. Yeah, but I mean, but he, he won't. won't actually defund it. But I mean, it's effective in in the sense that you know he gets to you know pose for holy pictures. He 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 gets the clicks. He gets the buzz. He gets the love. Right. You right. Know? It's all about attention seeking. Yeah. I mean, that's what's happening among the tech people. It's all about look at me. It's narcissism. You know, writ large. And I think what's interesting is I was looking about the uh, election in Poland. Mm -hmm. I think most people don't like this. And everyone's like surprised that yeah. the nationalists lost. I'm not. Yeah. People are tired of this, well, of yeah. this um, hip hypocrisy. And I think regular voters are for sure. Not everybody. There's going to be a group of people that no matter what you do, believes in this because they've been fully propagandized through social media, through constant repetition. And they will be that way, and that's the way they are, and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, well talk now, to me about— yeah, be, Most people yeah. are not like this. So talk to me about how this but, played out on social media, because, you know, there, you know, on, on one level, it appears that what used to be known as Twitter, which has been completely yeah. f***ed over by Elon Musk, is, is less influential. Yes. But I just get this kind of the sense that the siloing has become more intense. But so give me your sense of, of how the, this speaker's race played out on social media. Yeah, I think it's just being destroyed in real time. You're, you're, mm -hmm. what, you're seeing smaller and smaller echo chambers between yeah. and among okay. people. And then it's fed by a media, I'm sorry to say, that just covers it like it's breathless. Like now this person's out, now that person. Yeah. So it's a lot of, it's a lot of information and no meaning. What does it actually mean? Yeah. And so it's designed to be like that. It's designed for enragement. It's designed for engagement, but it's not designed for wisdom. Right. And so if you look to, and, and it's also addictive, you know it, you can't stop yes. looking. Right. Right. And so what actually happens? What's the actual result? Which is nothing, which is gridlock, which is nothing ever passes. And slowly but surely, they lose elections and they're not comfortable. They're much more comfortable being, um, and I hate to use this term, but a bomb thrower than an actual governor, right? It's much easier to do that. And but social media makes that easier from a from a, a word point of view is throw, you know, verbal bombs all around the place and call attention to yourself. That's, you know, that's the phenomena of George Santos. Why are we looking at this incompetent person? Why? <laughs> like he's, every minute you look at him is a waste of a minute you have in your life. But it's it's addictive. Yeah, it is addictive, and I've wasted so many minutes. So let's just uh, on 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 Jim Jordan for a moment. I mean, we've talked about sure. the role that he played on January sixth. Um, you know, the, the the his long track record of legislative incompetence, inefficiency, yeah. extremism. He's the guy responsible for that tweet. You know, was it Elon, Kanye, Trump? But as yeah. you pointed out on your podcast, there's more. There's more stuff coming on him, which is which is, yes. makes um, this all the more interesting because he's got all of this baggage, all of these questions, all of this history, and yet there there are more shoes to drop with Jim Jordan, aren't there? Yes, a hundred percent. These are these stories around what he did when he was a wrestling coach. Now, look, everyone's innocent till proven guilty, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of material here about what how he behaved that is problematic at the very least. We'll see how the reporting comes out. Apparently, the Washington Post is working on a piece about this. Mm -hmm. Um, it sort of reminds me, and I don't remember the guy's name because I've luckily forgotten him, who was running in Alabama, who had all kinds of hair on him. You know, Ray, around, Ray Moore? Yeah, picking up girls in yeah. malls, that yeah. kind of thing. Um, I think this guy is, a, you know, in this internet age, people are narcissists and they think it can't, they can't be touched. They think there aren't, uh, you know, repercussions for their behaviors long ago. Now, again, I don't know if he did what they said. I certainly have listened to a lot of testimony from yeah. wrestlers who said he did it. We'll see. We'll see uh, if that happens in these reported pieces, if, there, if the, there's lawsuits. Um, it, it shows the height of arrogance to think that this is not going to be a problem. I think it is going to be a problem. And to put yourself out there says to me, wow, you really don't think you can be touched. And, of course, in the Internet age, you know, there's that line um, – you know, everything is written. There's not. It's not erasable. The, the internet age is not erasable. <laughs> it's your permanent and, record. You know, everything is written in indelible yeah, ink. Yeah. And that's an issue. And of course, then there's the propaganda that's on top of it. And Jordan, in particular, I've I've dealt with him mostly around tech stuff. Hmm. He's completely ignorant around tech stuff. And he always, whenever he gets in trouble, 
he starts yelling first amendment and i'm mm-hmm. sort of like that's not the point here but he does that for he's cosplaying a defender of the first amendment see, which of course he's not see i, I think this he is does one of the, that that's yeah. when I've, I've had that experience with him which yep. i'm like you're actually not very smart is what well, my problem again is. and that's another one of the reasons why he is he is not ready for prime time i mean so the spotlight is going to get even brighter on him the washington post working on this yes. investigative piece which you talked about george clooney has this documentary with hbo on the allegations that he, that he covers so we'll, we'll see that yeah now you you use the word arrogance but it also yeah. goes back to this this shameless political culture and and politicians looking around in the age of Trump and going, you know what, this stuff would have killed me, um, you know, five, I, six, seven years ago. But nothing yeah. matters anymore. My base will not care. They don't care. They wouldn't care if uh, if Donald Trump uh, right. was aborting babies right. in the White House. They won't care any yeah. of this stuff. So, I mean, part of it is that you're living in a post post shame world. And yeah, because uh, Jim Jordan wouldn't be possible except in a post shame world. Well, right? you know, there were people like him, like Huey Long. There was this, we've yeah. had a history of these kind of, yeah. you know, uh, cosplayers is what I call right. them, demagogues. Um, where they, they, yeah, demagogues. It's not, a, it's not a new fresh thing for the United States of America mm-hmm. or anywhere really. Um, and the problem is the only one who's actually good at it is Donald Trump. Yeah. Like, let me just say, he is the greatest troll in history, and he's quite good at it. I don't think these other people have as much protection when they start down this road, right? I think there's two people who actually do very well, and they're quite opposite, which is AOC, um, who's very deft at Mm -hmm. social media, uh, and Donald Trump. And I hate to, I I wrote a column comparing them. It's very different people, very different messaging. But I think everyone else really is, is, you know, I sort of am like, step away from the keyboard, step away right now. And you see it everywhere, you know, everywhere, who, whether it's this Israeli Hamas thing or Ukraine, Everybody's an expert when they have no expertise, and you know they don't have any governor because it's addictive, and they get they. But fall they all in love think they're the, experts. That that's also part of the the addictive, you know, uh, the the addiction yeah. of social media is that you yep. spend enough time and you think you are smart, but what you really have is yes. a couple of phrases, bumper stickers that are tacked together. Sure. Um, but there, it, it is a you know misinformation universe, which brings me back to the the quick thing I really wanted to talk to you about. I, I don't have it. I, I should have written it down. The last time you and I spoke, I think, was yeah. just about the time that Elon Musk was taking over Twitter. And nobody could really have anticipated how yeah. what a complete shit show it was going to be. I mean, it was well, like, OK, I he's kind gonna... of did. I kind of did. OK, but, okay. but I mean, wow. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. I mean, can we yeah. just, just step back here? Because sure. Elon Musk is going through some yeah. things. You know the he guy, is. you have dealt with the guy in the in yeah. the past. So is is he intentionally trying to destroy Twitter or is he just have no fucking idea what he's doing? You know, just cuz people are good in one thing and let me just say he's very good at rockets, yeah. he's very good at cars, although he's got a lot more competition in the in the latter. The things he knows about, he does know about 100%. He's a little bit of a showman. Sometimes he doesn't know things in tech and talks about them anyway, but he's pretty smart in all the things around tech. He's very smart. Um, I think when you move into media, it's a very different story. And that's mm-hmm. what this is. Um, a lot of uh, tech pros have tried to get into media, whether it's Andreessen Horowitz or, you know, starting their own right. media, whatever the hell they were doing. And they, they closed it down pretty quick. Um, and they think they can bypass the press. And so what they are is First of all, it's not a very good business, Charlie. You understand that, right? It's not like the greatest business on earth yeah. anymore. It used to be. Um, but they think they, they can do better and they feel misunderstood. They have grievance if people don't lick them up and down all day. And so they want to speak for themselves, right? Mm-hmm. And and that's what he's doing here is he's playing out a lot of personal trauma. I think there is personal trauma, although everybody has personal trauma because he can afford to instead of buying you know a sports team or a yacht or marrying 20 times, which mm-hmm. he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, he's This is how he's playing out his personal traumas. And so I do think it's a lot mixed in with the ability to, to be able to do these things with the money he has. And what happens when you have that much money is nobody questions you that maybe you're an idiot, right? Well, like, well I think a lot of people are questioning because him. you have money. I mean, and this right. is, I mean, the thing is, he, he's he way overpaid for Twitter. He appears to be in the process of... 
of destroying much of its market value. It is worth a fraction. I mean, so like like a lot of people- It was work never worth trauma. that much. It was, oh, okay, it was right. it's going back down, right. It, it's right. going so, back down to where it but was worth. He has set tens of billions of dollars on fire to deal with yeah. his personal traumas. I mean, that just seems yes. not yes. an obvious life now, choice. It, there's a way out. He can buy the debt up at yeah. some point if the banks have to sell it. He can buy the debt off the $13 billion in debt. He could take it public and be a meme stock. There's ways out for him yeah. that actually, you know, there's a one born every minute, essentially, and there's a lot mm -hmm. of Elon stands. So there's a way out for him here. It's just kind of okay. problematic, but, so right? Is, but but is you're he... right. He's turning it He's turning it in his own little playground of, of neuroses, I think. You're well, right. Okay, so he, he obviously has a lot of trauma, a lot of neuroses. These are pre-existing conditions. Yeah. He does feel like he's going through something. I mean, it, it, yeah. it feels as if he sort of put his toe into politics, sort of right-wing politics, and sure. then he hit this toboggan slide into right-wing conspiracy theory, yeah. some of the darker places on the internet. So this seems to have accelerated. Sure. What is going on with him? Well, it's propaganda at the end, like I say. It's not, yeah. you know, everyone's like, this is new and fresh. This is propaganda, and this yeah. has happened over the course of our history very many times. Yeah. But why does and he so want to do this attractive. to himself? I mean, he's got a, this guy was the you know, time know. man of the year. He's got brand. He's got other companies. I mean, you why know, is he can't... playing around with the, the, the Peppy the Frog memes and stuff like that? I mean, the real yeah. dark, yeah. ugly side. What's well, that? he's Why always would he had these that? qualities. No. He always had these qualities of jokester, 12 year old boy. Mm -hmm. um, and Silicon Valley encourages men to become boys, right? Okay. They encourage juvenilia. They accuse, they, they encourage people to just be perhaps they do. And, and so they can do, if you can do whatever you want, you start doing whatever you want. And so it's very attractive to have explanations of a very confusing and difficult world. Um, and he was like this to an extent, but it was more. It was more silly memes, right? It was more silliness. And now it's it, it absolutely dark. You know, it's it's a little bit like Pinocchio. You remember when he went to the island yeah. um, of the boys? They started off fun and games, and then it became donkeys. You know, mm -hmm. that's how it happened. And when you combine in this country, gerrymandering with social media yeah. um, and, say, Fox News, We're you've got a prescription room. for real, um, uh, you know, becomes people become... Uh -huh. It's it's propaganda. I don't yeah. know. It's not okay, that so fresh an idea. What, what, and I think he, he's missing. Uh, he's missing something. So, that he can't pull yeah. himself back. So what what did you think of what, what is what is your thumbnail review of the Walter Isaacson book that came out in the midst of all of this? Oh. And by the way, I'm I'm a deep believer in like wait until somebody has actually finished their career or their lives before you do yeah. the definitive biography. Yeah. And so basically, yeah. you do this big biography in the midst of this massive storm um you've talked to walter isaacson you know you yeah i did an interview with him i gave him a pretty but... hard time okay tell yeah. me so what um what well i wrote it i wrote a review of yeah. it in like 10 words or whatever i basically said you know you know troubled young man uh gets a lot of money and decides to take his trauma out on everybody else <laughs> sometimes he's right sometimes he's yeah. wrong mostly he's just seems crazier and crazy yeah. you know but i think the pages. problem with the book yeah, yeah. it's a it's a 600 it's a doorstop it's a book um it's i think he 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 was a little bit of an amanuensis to this guy he just typed what he said um there's a mm. lot of sourcing problems in the book uh. um you know he sort of is like elon says this his dad says this i don't know you know that's that's not what a reporter does like in many stories including around his childhood trauma I don't know who's telling the truth. And I would like a biographer to tell me who's telling the truth and not just use it as he has demons. What can we do? You know what I mean? I, I'd like to know who's lying a lot more. Um, I think there's there's one thing that inadvertently happens as you see him playing out the same trauma over and over again with different people, whether it's partners in his early companies um, where he feels aggrieved or it's later the people who actually founded Tesla. He has, he's still angry at that person. You know, I'm the one who did it. It can be only me. Um, and I, I don't fault him. He's very talented. Yeah. But I think it's a constant series of him getting in beefs with people. Um, and then, uh, you know, and I don't know what's served by that and, and yeah. letting someone off the hook. He lets him off the hook. And one of the things I said to Walter in the interview was, you're harder on Amber Heard than you are on Elon Musk. Seriously? 
okay, she seems a little unstable as a person, mm -hmm. but does she deserve the enormous amount of reporting that goes into her problems versus this guy? And that was my issue. It was yeah. it was a lot of excusing bad behavior as genius, and I don't agree with Walter on that. So you, 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 this is not new, and you know this a lot better than me, so, so help me with all of this. You mentioned that uh, Silicon Valley encourages the tech bros uh, to all be little boys. Uh, so the performative yeah. assholery of the tech bros is, is, is neither new nor isolated. It feels right. like it's getting, it's intensifying and it's not well, just Elon Musk. No, just Mark Andreessen just put out this yes. techno optimist guy. It's what ridiculous. Is it's such, this is this, you know, he likes to write essays now and again. Mm. He was famous for yeah. writing software is eating the world, which is like, well, thank you for that obvious revelation, but okay, great. He wrote that. Um, you know, he likes to do that with phrases and he wrote this techno optimist guy and it was such a straw man, like those who hate AI, those who do this, he sets up a false dichotomy. I think AI is amazing. And I also am worried adults are like yeah. that. You know what I mean? Adults take a, take a moment. And so one of the things that was really problematic with that piece is that you're either with us or against us. And I'm sort of like, is it, it's okay to be worried about implications mm -hmm. of inventions and at the same time understand their importance. And so he was setting up this idea as anyone who doesn't think it's all great is an idiot and, and, and kind of evil for, for pushing back and stupid. And that's how they have to do it. Because honestly, they didn't go to college long enough and they don't know how to argue and they don't know how to make a case. But instead, they rather do this scorched earth policy that is just a straw man. You know, Trump does it all the time. Yeah. So, and but, but is, 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 is this new culture? I mean, you know, again, no, nothing new about narcissistic, you know, adolescent yeah. tech bros. But a lot of them seem to have decided that they want to be more than tech bros. They want to be oligarchs. They want to be important. Yeah. They want to be deep thinkers. And so we're entering a, a, a phase in which, you know, we live in their world. <laughs> I mean, sure. You know, there are so many billionaires with outsized <laughs> egos and yeah. power and clout, right. and they and they affect this environment far more they than do. say who you know is chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee necessarily. They do. So yeah, talk they to do. me a little bit about the the ambitions of the tech bros, what the, what they want to grow up to be. I, I don't know. I honestly don't. You know, it's it, it, essentially he wrote a five thousand word rant. That's I don't know what else to say. Is that's what it was, and. One of the problems is, um, is it, you know, this idea that um, that you can that that this is the way to go. You know, we are being lied to. It's the same stuff. Yeah. Whether it's um, there's an vaccines. audience for that. Yeah. Well, it's it, it's the same language around RFK Jr. vaccines. Um, we are told technology takes our jobs, reduces our wages, increases inequality. We are told to be bitter, angry, and resentful about tech. No, we are not. You know what I mean? It's kind of. Um, it's kind of like setting up kind of a ridiculous argument. I don't know why they do it. Did they not get loved enough as a child? I don't know. I don't know what happened to them. But they're unable to have an actual argument. And anyone who argues with you or provides feedback is the enemy. And it's weird. It's just, well, it's just it, weird. It, when you're a billionaire, you can create your own bubble, right? You're surrounded by That's people right. who are telling you that you are you are funny. You are yeah. beautiful. Um, have you done something great yeah. with your hair? Love the outfit, yeah. right? Um, yeah, exactly. Hey, that, that last uh, bromide that you said is like, this is, this is Socrates. Brilliant. You are brilliant. Yeah. You are a philosopher yeah. king as well. Yeah. So um, it wasn't that long ago that... Places like Twitter. I'm going to keep referring to it as Twitter. I mean, how do you pronounce this? X. Sure. I mean, it's like Did whatever. You can call it Twitter. Whatever. It's fine. The, the, the Twitter was the place you went to be able to follow news. And so yeah. um, in the in the before times, in something like the, the Israeli war, we would be looking yeah. for information uh, sure about would. what's happening in real time. And now you, you've talked about this rather e extensively uh, because Twitter has just become a cesspool of fake videos, misinformation. There was a propaganda network of 67 accounts found on Twitter who were coordinating yeah. a campaign of, of, posing, of posting false inflammatory content related to Israel and Hamas. Um, CBS reported uh, Elon Musk laid off much of the team responsible for monitoring posts. The account profiles were like sleeper accounts posting innocuous huh. information until they were activated at, after the attacks by Hamas. I mean, what's going on here? I mean, clearly... Elon Musk um, took down all of the controls right at the moment when he perhaps did. they were most critical. 
Well, he did it right away. You know, he did, he did yeah. it a while ago. And so this right. is one of the first big crises that mm -hmm. has happened. Twitter was never good at this. They were always sort of, there was always a bot problem. There was always a misinformation yeah. problem. Same thing with all of them. It's a very difficult issue, but not even trying and not, and just letting it go. And he is, I guess his philosophy is, you know, now you know what they think and therefore it's a better world. Actually what it is, is a more confusing and, and it, it's a problem to figure out what's real and what's not. And when people it are in hard. a high emotional state, that's not good, right? right? It's not that you don't want to keep things from people. It's that they're in a high emotional state and something that's inaccurate can send them into a, the next version of that. And so what's the, what's the, what is the purpose served by serving up fake videos? There's none. There's none except to get people more upset. It doesn't bring us to a better place. And, you know, it's absolutely true that you are very upset in the moment. Like, and as we were after 9-11, if you sure. recall, everybody had an emotional reaction. And then everybody, even as horrific as it was, everybody calmed down and said, okay, what should we do instead of just lashing out? And that's, that's how adults behave, right? Yeah. And so I think what happens is when he creates a information network where information is bad, you're going to have bad consequences, no matter how you slice it. Now, the good thing is, a lot of people understand this, but not everybody, for sure. And and therefore, everyone's going to try to game the system and try to create, you know, chaos. And a lot of people just want, though they don't want to create illumination, they want to create chaos. They want to. And this is the perfect tool to do so. That's their goal, is chaos. So and yeah, again, yeah. you know, it's propaganda. Well, the the Europeans have a different approach than than we do. You know, we you know yeah. kind of throw up our hands about all of this, but the the EU has instructed uh, Twitter and Meta to tackle the the uh, all of this disinformation and misinformation, yeah. and there are fines and fees involved for not complying. Yep. So, yeah, uh, is that going to have any impact? Does that make a difference? Well, you know, Elon's sort of like sue me, you know, mm -hmm. make me. You know, I think he's done that with rent. Like, I'm not paying the rent. What are you going to do? If you're willing to, again, getting back to shameless of being like, I'm not paying the rent. I'm not, I'm firing these people. I'm not paying them their severance. They have to come at you, right? And therefore, you're in a more powerful position if you're with. Donald Trump perfected this, put me into bankruptcy, whatever, you know. Uh, he's, you know, the, what he's doing around the courts right now is the same thing is come at me, arrest right. me. I'm fine. Right. Very few people are willing to do that. Same mm -hmm. thing with Jim Jordan. Oh, right. It you know, go against me, see what happens. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think and that, so that, 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 all, that all connects. So I want to come back to social media um, in, in, in just a moment because, you know, there are these. Sure. I, I'm constantly getting people saying, okay, you know, if you're, you know, how long do you stay on Twitter? You go into threads, you know, what about this yeah. and all of this? We'll come back to that. But you gave a very interesting I interview uh, to uh, Christine. Christian Amanpour a couple of weeks ago about Rupert Murdoch's legacy, um, which which I want to you know things move sure. so quickly we kind of forget that hey you know we actually had succession in in real life Fox News has had, uh, has gone through a few things this year uh, lost that seven hundred eighty seven million dollar lawsuit to Dominion um, yeah fired Tucker Carlson Rupert Murdoch kind of surprised yeah. people shouldn't have surprised people but he left so give me your sense well, of as you look back on in... on that. Left in parentheses, that old crocodile yes, hasn't gone anywhere. No, no, no. no He's still goes. wandering around the swamp, you know, ready to kill. No. So you, you know that Lachlan's yeah. going to put the the mirror under his nose when they're they're burying him. I mean, it's just going to well, they're going to they're going to check and poke him with pins. I, um, I always say I, I would never turn my back on that old man. I so would you, never turn my back. you said that you think that he was the most single destructive force in America, yeah. England, and Australia. Now that's saying quite yeah. a lot. One of them. A lot I mean, of it has to be combined. Yeah. Well, there is, but I think he was willing. It's the same set of um, willingness to to just not care about the truth, right? No. It's the same set of, you know, audience, 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 what will make them excited and upset. Um, you know, at first it was tabloid, which everybody gets tabloid, it's fine. You know, the New York Post, whatever, they can scream about whatever they want. Yeah. Um, but he, he took it to an extreme, that you know, just shamelessness to an extreme. And the cynicism and, too. You know, he's cynicism and, you know, I essentially, you know, you like to say he created a monster and it got out of his control, yeah. but I don't think it got out of his control. I think he purposely created a monster. And then, you know, when people weren't doing what he said, say Tucker Carlson, who decided he'd had enough of the old man, um, you know, he fired him before he could leave, right? Yeah. That's what it looked like there. Um, 
you know, I feel like there's, you know, if between social media, Fox News and gerrymandering, <laughs> I, it explains a lot it of does. what's happened on in this country. And and I do think they were the first to go there and 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 do this, even though he wasn't particularly good at, at internet. Yeah, he was very good at broadcast and and making an entire group of people uh, believe things that weren't so, necessarily wh true. What? Why do you think he fired his biggest star, Tucker Carlson? What do you think had happened? He was a liability. Mm -hmm. You know, I think the lawsuits, the Smartmatic, and and that's still pending. Mm -hmm. I think he cost him a lot of money. And for for sloppiness, um, I think he he you know indulged him forever. Yeah. And then the guy started thinking he was bigger than Rupert Murdoch, which maybe he is, maybe he's not. I don't okay, know. Okay. Now, now that was my next question. So there was a lot of speculation that Tucker had become so big that in fact he was bigger than Fox, and that that even is after he? he left Fox, well, that's what I want to know because I keep waiting for Tucker's next big thing. Well, that was that's that was my question. Because yeah. as we started this, this interview, and I was thinking about this, I was thinking, so when's the last time I heard Tucker Carlson mention? When's the last time I yeah. you know, saw anything? And he was supposed right. to, he and Elon were supposed to create this huge- Well, they are. I'm sure are he'll they? get some money. Yeah. Well, I think he's probably going to get some money and try to create a media company like Ben yeah. Shapiro, who's actually very, I can't stand Ben Shapiro, but he's no. good at business. I'll tell you right. that. No. Um, I, you know, maybe he'll do something like that. Um, Maybe he'll do something like that, and then we'll see how good he is at it. Um, but is that bigger than but, Fox News? I mean, everyone, Well, it seems like everybody's slicing the salami narrower and narrower and narrower. Have to or see the product. Thinner and thinner um, and but, thinner. But he certainly seems smaller on Twitter. Yes. You know, he reminds me of Gloria Steinem in Sunset Boulevard. It's it's the pictures that got smaller, not me. I'm still a star. Um, and, you know, at the yeah. end where she's like going like, I'm ready for my close up. That's what he reminds me of is the pictures got smaller, not me. I'm still big. We'll see. We'll see what he creates. I'm, I'm yeah. certainly open to seeing. Well, I'm I'm, I'm interested in, in the in the transition because there are a lot of people who've left, uh, you know, the news and they they're trying to stay relevant. They they still have their platforms, and the question is, you know, is and 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 they may be lucrative for them. I mean, I don't know how yeah. much you know money, but I mean, you know, think how big Megyn Kelly was at Fox, and then you know NBC yep. paid her just a crap load of money, and now they she's did. got a podcast. Okay, she's out yeah, there. She she's does. part of the conversation. She's active, but clearly at a completely different level than she used to be. Yes. So yeah. Well, she's got her audience, right? That's what she's, right. this is where it's coming to. Everyone's got their audience and that's right. powerful. It and, is. You powerful. know, before, before it was spray and pray, right? Where you could get anybody. Now they're, they're targeting and that's what's happening. And so Tucker will right. have his people. He will. Megan will have her people and she'll continue to do her song and dance or whatever it happens to be that pleases her audience. Yeah. Um, it's not something I particularly like. Um, but she has her audience, right? Um, and so you're going to see a lot of that. The question is, people like that, I'm not as impressed with them as I am with some TikTok stars. They're a little too old. I, I hate to say that, but like Joe Rogan is much better at it, right? He came out of nowhere no. and created a product that everybody that has a bigger audience. And so the question is, can they leverage YouTube and Reddit? That's where young people are, by the way, yeah. YouTube and Reddit. And can they leverage that? Maybe. I don't Maybe. know, but there's, I, I would look at for younger people, you know, and I, I hate to be ages because I'm old myself, but, um, I'm, but I'm at right some here, point, I'm, I'm sitting yeah, right but you have I a am, smaller right audience. Here. I, can, I, I can hear you. Okay. Okay. So you have a smaller audience. Yeah. That's all. But, but, but you're, you're this is a, to the this, choir. I mean, it, it used to be that in order to be influential, you had to, you know, be on network show with, you know, 40 sure. million people. And now if you can get a million subscribers, you've, you've, you've landed in Clover. You're doing very, yes, very well. You, have. you can be yeah. influential. Yeah. You can have your audience. You can monetize it. All right. So speaking of this, um, you watch all of this stuff. I am very confused about what is the successor to Twitter? Where are we going to go? Um, yeah. I feel like a sucker to think that somehow, you know, Mark Zuckerberg was going to, you know, rescue the world with with threads yeah. and Instagram. I like threads. Um, I like there, threads. Okay, I, I, I like threads, too. I mean, there was Post out there. There was yep. uh, Blue Sky. Like I'm going to leave somebody out. Mastodon, I, like I just gave up on. I'm, I apologize. Yeah. I just, I, 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 okay. I couldn't do it. It's hard. What What is going to be out there? I mean, Trump went off and created his own Truth Social. He's got his audience. I so, think it's all collapsed. I don't think there's going to be a central place. I think uh, people are going to find, like I said, find their smaller audiences. I do think Threads is pretty good as a product. They're yeah. sort of pushing away from news, and that makes sense to me for yeah. them because they got into so much trouble before. Right. When they had Holocaust deniers running all over Facebook. 
Um, so I think, you know, they'll, you'll be in your little neighborhood versus a, a mass thing. I, I think Twitter is, was a mass thing and now it's just a bad product experience, really. You know, you have porn. I get, I, first time I got porn, I got people yeah. calling me names. Uh, you've got Cheech and Chong ads all the time, which is like, okay, I, I'm not in the mood for eat weed right now, 40 mm-hmm. times a day. Um, and then the product is bad. It doesn't work as well. It doesn't have as much impact and it's, it's more, um, it's more narcissistic, right? You just, you just right. are kind of out there, like we talked about, talking to yourself and showing how, you know, and, and cosplay kind of thing. I do think that I have talked about the implosion of all these social media platforms. I don't think they're just the way everything went to cable, Charlie, if you remember, it was the yeah. networks and then cable. That's where we're going with this. Mm-hmm. And everyone will be in their own little world without a center. Um, I think, I th- I think that good. is our, I think that is our, I think that is our, our future. Um, okay, okay. So the other, I mean, I guess, you know, part of it is, is that, and I, I've, I've experienced this and you do, you go out and you do forums with, with individuals and you realize that it's very difficult to have a conversation in politics because there's no shared, there's no shared reality. Yeah, um, that's true. And I was actually, there uh, is. But there is. Of course, Come no, on. no, there is a shared reality. But I mean, you can't yeah. talk to somebody about it. So I was yeah. on, on a panel with a young Republican, and I asked him about. We're talking about the, you know, the, the jobless rate. He thought the jobless rate was the highest in American history. You know, uh, when I asked him about, about Donald Trump's comments about Hezbollah, he'd never heard of them. What's your source for that? Um, it's oh, like wow. they, things oh. happen that just don't don't even don't even register. Um, so, yes, we do have a shared reality. And the big shared reality well, is that no, the world. Charlie, he's just f-ing with you. He knows. He knows. Oh, no, he this this mm, you are oh, really? kinder and gentler than I am because it was really like, I just whoa. think they're cynical. There was a moment people. when I asked him about America's role in NATO. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that look that people get in their eyes. Yeah. Where you can tell he didn't know what NATO was. Probably not. Where yeah. are we going well, on that conversation? Just ignorant. Well, speaking of the shared reality, of course, what's going on? I don't want to get into the, um, the 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 weeds on on Israel and Hamas, but kind of an extraordinary moment where Joe Biden is getting on an airplane. He's going there tomorrow. Yes, he he's doing I, a great job, what, actually. Honestly, what do you think of that? Because I, 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 on one level, I think this is a bold move. This shows how vigorous is. he is. I think he's handled it well. I think he's he has uh, drawn the moral lines very very clearly, but. Generally, you don't throw the president into a situation like yeah. this without yeah. knowing whether you have all the diplomatic ducks in a row. Um, yeah, it's a risky, this, it's this a risky is a big move. Risk. It is a risky move, but I kind of like it. It's sort of you know he understands that everything now is 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 this kind of thing where acts symbolic acts, and I think that probably it's a it's my only issue is the danger, right? Is obviously the security issues around it yeah. in this in this region right now. Um, that said, I think he understands the power of pictures and photos and support that people, and he's trying to cut, he's, look, he's in a presidential race against yeah. Trump right now. And you have this guy, I don't know what's going on with him. Like lately, it's kind of like there's something going on with his tan and then he's slurring his words and then he's talking about Hamas being smart. And then there was something about Christmas. Um, you yeah, know, it that seems was, that was, like he that wants was weird. to contrast. It was, but. That's all right. Every day of the week and twice on Sunday, Trump does something weird. Um, and we're used to that. We're sort of become inert to his And behaviors. does any of it make any difference? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry to even ask not the question. Not to his fans. No, not well, to his fans, no. But I mean, okay. Well, no, I don't No, My mother was Trump, was not a Trump supporter, then became a Trump supporter uh, through Fox News. And now is like, what is wrong with him? And I think there's a lot more people who are saying, what is wrong with him? She really thinks he's in it for himself. Like, you know what I mean? Like she's, and I don't know if that will stick, but it's certainly, I've never heard her say that until recently. Yeah, the the, the other thing, big defense I get is when you point out there's something wrong with this guy, of course, is the people um, on the right are completely pre, pre-programmed right now to say, well, but but Joe Biden, Joe Biden is senile, Joe Biden oh. can't do anything, which again makes a bold move like he going to Israel. gave a great speech Israel. and he's going to Israel and this guy's he, he, talking he, about he, Christmas. He did. We, we, we will, we'll, we'll see about yeah. that. I don't know if you saw uh, Chris yeah. Christie has a new ad where he actually highlights Donald Trump's comments on Hezbollah being so smart. Yeah. And he uses the word, this fool. Only a fool would say this. And I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. How many times he said we cannot reelect this fool? Yes. Um, Chris Christie's not going to be the next president of the United States, but boy, no. he is thro- he's throwing some roundhouses. He is. I think he's doing. He's talk about someone who knows how to use social media well. He's really good about that. I interviewed him. You know, I think I, I think one of the 
problems that he has is he was with him until he was against him, right? Yeah. It's sort of John Kerry-esque. I think it's fine to have changed your mind. And I think that's what we don't allow I people do to do. Like, I was wrong. You know, whether yeah. it's Anthony Scaramucci or Chris Christie, we have to allow people to say, wow, I was, you know, and that's hard to do because, you know, I, I just encourage you when my mom is saying stuff like that, I'm like, yeah, look at this, like that. Like, that's right. You know, you don't want to say you were stupid to have bought this. It's, and, and you know, at a certain point, it's all hands on deck. If, if you know, it, it, we cannot have the luxury of not having the, the enemy of our enemy not be our friend. So, Kara, right. I find yes. that I find yeah. that distasteful. One of the things I think about is, you remember the silent majority with Nixon? Oh, yeah. I think there's a silent majority of people who've just about friggin' had it, and they just want to deal with their kids and the economy and cry. Crime is, is something right. you should be concerned about. Right. And drug, drug use and... Um, and making a good living, they're concerned about AI and what it'll do to their jobs, justifiably. And I think there's a lot of people like that who are like, this is a circus. And Jim Jordan is a clown. And Donald Trump is a clown. And there are serious things happening. And I do believe there's a quiet group of people. You see it in elections across the country and in Poland where we're like, that's enough of this nonsense. Yeah. I believe that. I do yeah. believe that. I, I think, well, it's going to be interesting because you can see the Democrats are very, very anxious uh, to run against Jim Jordan. And you you, you know that, I, I guess here's this, uh, <laughs> you know, my, 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 my five cent theory on this, because I was at, you know, before this, this all came down, I'm thinking, well, there's what, there's, you know, 12, 20 mm -hmm. Republicans who, you know, were elected in Biden districts. Why would they want to go right. along with, with Jim Jordan? Yeah. Why would they want to be linked to this crazy? And maybe what they've decided is the greater crazy is Trump, the, the lesser crazy, which is, hey, we're on the ballot with yeah. Donald Trump. If we're going to elect, if we're going to nominate Donald Trump, um, there's there's no, you know, it, incrementally, it's it's not that yeah. much worse to have Jim Jordan, but it's, it is going to be a mess. And the more people well, find out about good, Jim though, Jordan- right? He can't do anything, well, correct? Well, but but, but your point, your point is interesting. Is that he is counting on that post shame politics? I don't think he's ready for prime time. I don't think that he he's going to survive in the spotlight as well as somebody else. And if he thinks that he's going to get the same moral pass as Donald Trump, I think he's somewhat naive. No, Kara nobody Swisher, is. Host nobody of the podcast is. on with Kara Swisher, co-host of the podcast Pivot. Cannot wait for your book in February. Burn Thank book, you. It's fun. A tech love story. Thank you all so right, much for coming on back on the about podcast. It. Thanks, Charlie. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for listening to today's Bulwark podcast. I'm Charlie Sykes. We will be back tomorrow and we will do this all over again.